As we look at the degradation of our society, it's easy for us to walk down our mall or the streets or see other people and, and kind of write them off, you know, as if the grace of God would be rejected by them. And we've got to be careful not to do that as believers because they might have said no before, but if we've not presented Christ to them, we don't know that that no won't become a yes. And so I would rather have them reject knowing that we offered them the free gift of life rather than assuming that God has given up on them, because that's not true. God hasn't given up on them. And this type of argument is really the crux of what Paul is talking about as we continue our study in the book of Romans, as we'll see in just a moment. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us. Uh, by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for notifications, you can receive a devotional much like this one, where we, we read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. Well, as you noted all through this week, the, the subject has been Israel. Has God given up on Israel? What all has happened with Israel? The hardening of heart and how many people are not being saved and only a remnant's going to be there. And Paul begins this passage of scripture with a reminder uh, through a question that he gives. He oftentimes does this, uh, this type of questioning that we've seen throughout this time uh, in Romans. Let's check it out together. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means, for I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know that what the scripture says of Elijah, how he appeals to God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets, and they have demolished your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what does God, what is God's reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there's a remnant chosen by grace. But if it's by grace, it's no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. What then? Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened. As it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor eyes that would not see and ears that would not hear down to this very day. And David says, let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so they cannot see and bend their backs forever. So I asked, did they stumble in order that they might fall? By no means. Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles so as to make Israel jealous. Now, if their trespass means riches for the world, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will, will their full inclusion mean? And so Paul comes back and he's talking again. So is Israel too far gone? They're rejecting you. Remember how we talked about earlier this week that every place that, that Paul went, he would proclaim the gospel to the Israelites, to the Jews who were there. And in most of these places, he would get some converts, but then the Jews would turn against him and cast him out. And so this is the, the, the burden that is on his heart. And so the question, the natural question is, well, if there's only a remnant, does this mean that God has rejected his people? No, all of the promises of God are still true. In other words, those promises are fulfilled in Christ. As we read uh, yesterday's devotion, you know, that the end of the law is Jesus. Their eyes need to see that in order to realize that Jesus is the one that is the fulfillment of all the promises that they're looking forward to. But they've replaced Jesus with works. That's why we look in verse 6 when he talks about the remnant chosen by grace in verse 5, that there's a remnant chosen by grace from Israel. And, and if it's grace, it's no longer work. And he's not talking about election as individuals, but rather people who have received the grace of Jesus Christ and are no longer working for their faith through the law. This is what he's talking about in this passage of Scripture. God hasn't rejected them. As a matter of fact, he's not rejected anybody. He sent his son for all. As a matter of fact, our, our probably the most quoted verse in the Bible, John three sixteen, where it says, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That is a gospel that's not just for the Gentiles, it's for the Jews as well. And so Paul is saying, look, if if their rejection means riches for the Gentiles, if they turn away from that rejection, what will their inclusion mean except for eternal life, right? It's going to be an amazing thing when we see Jews who come to Christ. So if you have Jewish friends, don't write them off. And if you look at our culture today and see all of these people who are weighed down by them by their sins, don't write them off and assume that they will reject Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You hold out the word of life and allow them to accept or reject. But it's not because God uh, wants to reject them. It's them rejecting God. Getting that order right in our head helps us to understand the grace that is given, not just to those people, but to us as well. And so I, I pray that that helps you today and helps you to reach out to others with confidence, with the grace of Jesus Christ allowing him to be the one to accept and reject, uh, to be accepted or rejected by us offering out uh, the word of life to them. So I pray that encourages you this day, and we will talk with you again tomorrow.